Well, we're out of the EFL, EF, EFL Cup, Carabao Cup, whatever it is called. We're eliminated 2 0. Man City has won 2 0. Once again, the story is we didn't take our opportunities and it could have been a different match. Expected, though, right? Expected, expected loss. Excel. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Look, moving into the match, the mood for a lot of us was very, very dull. And um, there wasn't much expectation moving into this match. A lot of us probably, you know, predicted a loss for Chelsea, which is not normal. And surely enough, that's what's happened. But before they scored, there was an absolute onslaught from them in the second half, especially in the beginning. And, and the goal was coming. The free kick, Huli Valley just didn't jump. We'll talk about a lot of the players. There's, there's certain players that I need to call out and we need to agree on certain things. But before they scored in the first half, do you know what? Overall, this match probably wasn't that bad. It was better than Arsenal's match, if I'm being absolutely honest. At least we had some chances. We didn't get completely boxed in. We tried something. We created chances. In the first half, I know a lot of people would, would hate this and don't like talking about this. Hakim Ziyech. Hakim Ziyech created chances. Hakim Ziyech created chances. Oh, man, I'm just watching Liverpool go through. Ah, Liverpool's gone through. Um, they've beaten Derby. Arsenal's lost as well. I think Spurs have lost as well. But Hakim Ziyech... He created an excellent chance for Christian Pulisic, and Christian Pulisic fluffed that opportunity. Overall, Christian Pulisic had a pretty all right game, to be honest. Defensive, uh, you know, with the ball in progression, he was actually taking the players on 1v1. But that moment is what defines Christian Pulisic, missing those clear cut opportunities. And that would have meant so much for Hakim Ziyech as well, a player that hasn't been able to get into this team. That kind of assist lifts the morale for. That type of a player. And we should have been 1 0 up. That was an easy opportunity. It wasn't even anything difficult. It was literally a few meters away from the goal and he fluffed, fluffed the shot. Since then, I have to shout out Lewis Hall. Lewis Hall's performance was brilliant. He was probably the most standout player for me, even though he missed two opportunities, two really, really good opportunities. But he's a young kid, man. I don't want to be harsh on him. From what I saw, he's probably one of the very few players that are putting their hand up to perhaps start against Newcastle on the left side. If we do play with three at the back, he could potentially play as a left wing back. Attacking-wise, he was giving us some sort of a threat. In the first half, I believe he had, uh, I'm pretty sure it was in the first half, yeah, where he had that opportunity. He did everything right. Once again, Ziyech started the whole, you know, attacking uh, play on the right side. I think he went around uh, or he, he, he turned a particular defender. Then he put the ball through to Christian Pulisic. Christian Pulisic drove the ball and then passed it to Lewis Hall. Lewis Hall did everything right in that sequence, even cut back in. But the shot with his right foot just wasn't strong enough, of course, and saved by the Man City keeper. And similarly in the second half as well, Hakim Ziyech again, you know, putting the ball on the plate for Lewis Hall after being 1-0 down. Once again, Hakim Ziyech missing out on, on an assist and uh, a particular shot that I feel should have been in. But once again, Lewis Hall with his right foot, not his, you know, stronger foot. His weaker, weaker foot, and it doesn't go in. Well saved by the goalkeeper. But the morale of the story is you don't take your chances. The opposition, quality oppositions like Man City, will gobble things up when they do find their chances. And fantastic free kick, really good switch of play to Mares, who was then 1v1 with Kukurau. A lot of people giving stick to Kukurau, but overall, Kukurau take that particular situation away. There was a moment where Kovacic gave the ball away and Kukurea tracked back and won. Kukurea overall was okay. You're going to have that odd mistake. And that was, I don't even know if that was a mistake. It is Mares, who is very gifted technically. 1v1 um, was able to was able to take care of Kukurea. And the shot was saved by by Mendy, uh, I believe. And then and then Julian Alvarez was there to tuck it, tuck it in. Who was tracking Julian Alvarez? I don't know. Now, enough about the match. Look, we probably expected to lose. We've lost. Probably should have done better with the chances we've had. But I do want to call out a few players. Number one, Dennis Zakaria. Can we please, as a fan base, now agree why probably he wasn't playing? 
after the Zagreb match, even me, I was probably one of those as well that was thinking he probably should start against Arsenal. He looked like he had no pace in this match. The, 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 the pace of the match, how quick it was, he could not keep up with it. From the early stages of the match, there were times where Grealish was just running past him. I think it's clear now we understand why Graham Potter wasn't using this guy. He's not ready. Will he be ready? I don't know. Zagreb, he looked great. I think against Arsenal, he would have been murdered. And against City, he got demolished. So where do we stand in regards to Zakaria? I, I, he's not the answer. He's not the answer. I think this, as a fan base, you and me, just properly, logically speaking, I don't think he belongs. I really don't think he belongs. He was a ghost in this particular match. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, number two. Playing as a right wing back, sure. Not his preferred position. I get it. But it doesn't even matter if it is his preferred position. Once again, Ruben Loftus-Cheek wasn't good. This team needs cosmetic surgery. There is no doubt about that. This team needs a lot of changes. A lot of changes. Up front, Armando Breuer. This was a particular match for you to shine. I don't think he gave enough. I don't think he gave enough. He didn't put his hand up to start against Newcastle. I think it's going to be a very easy pick for Aubameyang to come in. And, and, and the fact is, Aubameyang in recent times hasn't been good. So it was a good opportunity for Amanda Breuer to seize this moment and take care of things. I think the biggest story in this scenario with, you know, obviously Lewis Hall playing really well, huge headline as well, which is great for Chelsea. But I think one of the biggest ones is Omari Hutchinson. The fact that Omari Hutchinson didn't even get a single minute I find that strange. You're bringing on, you're bringing on Mason Mount Sterling. You're bringing on Sterling. You're bringing on Sterling, Graham Potter. Why? To get a reception in Man City in front of his former home home team. Why? At two 0 down. The fact that he didn't even start was a bit strange for me. I wasn't too unhappy with the lineup, but Omari Hutchinson is one I probably would have expected him to start. We probably could have even gone 4 2 3 1 instead of the 3 3 4 3 or whatever we played. Probably could have done with 4 4 2 3 1, play Ziyech in the, in the cam position and have Amari Hutchinson on the right side, Christian Pulisic on the left side, Amanda Bra up front, sacrifice one of the defenders. Probably cook around, have Lewis Hall as a left back. Very disappointed that Amari Hutchinson didn't even see a minute. Where will he see a minute now? We're out of this EFL Cup, Carabao Cup. We are out. So we can't even give minutes anymore. Moving forward in the Premier League, every game is important. He's not going to get minutes there. Champions League, now we're going to play second phase. We're not going to see minutes there. This was a good opportunity to see something from Amari Hutchinson. It's very, very disappointing. I think that will probably be the biggest highlight. Where do we go now? Where do we go now, ladies and gentlemen? Where do we go now? We look forward to Newcastle. My expectation moving into the Man City game was, was nothing. But the expectation against Newcastle, as much as, as much as I think we're probably not going to get a win, but we have to get a win. We've not won in the last five, four Premier League games. This will be the fifth one. This is the last one before the World Cup. Going into this match with a loss, 2-0 loss. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know where the team's headspace is at. A lot of the fan base is getting frustrated. One thing we wanted to see today was a good performance. I'm not going to say it was a bad performance, but it's obviously not a heartwarming performance to take. Um, we didn't put our chances away. That's what disappoints me the most. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you felt about that match. Let me know what you thought about our players. Um... Koulibaly defensively was a bit of a iffy thing. Mendy was all right, actually. Mendy yeah, made some really crucial saves. But yeah, a couple of players really didn't stand up, really didn't stand up. And obviously our finishing once again has let us down. But yeah, let us know, ladies and gentlemen, in the, in the comment section, how you felt about the match, how you feel about moving on to the Newcastle fixture. We'd love to hear from you guys. Until next time. So yeah.